2022 Airport Advisory Board meeting. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'll call the meeting to order, and Stephanie, can you please call the roll? Okay. Chairman Earl? Here. Board Member Bliss? Here. Board Member Dean? Here. Board Member Jordan? Here. Uh, Board Member Robinson? Do you see who's coming late? Okay. Board Member Salamatean? We have a quorum. Thank you very much. Um, first item on our agenda, as always, is a public invited to be heard. Does anyone want to speak at our first public invited to be heard tonight? Come on down. While you're on the way, reminder for anyone who's going to speak, uh, please start with your name and address. You've got five minutes to speak. Um, address your comments to the board and be respectful, please. Thank you. Oops. Oh, good catch. The only have to switch. <laughs> I think. My name is Keith Griffith. My address is 7066 Johnson Circle in Niwot. And uh, I'm here to talk about um, the future of the airport. We're all here because of that. And the future of the airport, I think, will depend on many factors, but the, the key one will be how the public views the value of the airport. If the public uh, considers the airport to be a nuisance, then we're in trouble, and if they consider it to be an asset, then we're, we're in good shape. So we've all seen the number of the numerous people and their kids who park by the um, on Airport Road or uh, at the parking lot on Airport Road near the end of Runway 29. And this is a... Um, an interesting and unique feature that there are very few airports where you can park within a few hundred feet of the end of the runway and watch uh, parachutists, uh, home-built airplanes, uh, parachute uh, uh, turbine airplanes, uh, jets coming and going, and the ubiquitous 172s doing thousands of touch and goes. So uh, that's really quite uh, an asset for Longmont, that it's a place where people can go and appreciate the airport. And on top of all that, it's got the tremendous backdrop of Long's Peak. So we also have a good start there in making a nice little pocket park. There's two uh, Eagle Scout projects that have been done with a runway and a tower. There's a uh, stone picnic table that is, uh, people use for uh, staying with the kids on top of it so they can see over the fence. Um, so we have attractions there that can be expanded and enhanced, and what I'd like to do is to have the airport board consider uh, a resolution to foster such a thing and then go to the Parks and Recreation people with Levi's blessing, of course, and then say, let's work something up, make a pocket park there that's got grass, it's got a fence to protect kids from the road, it's got something other than uh, gravel for uh, teenagers to spin their wheels in, and uh, could be a very nice facility. So um, I hope the Oakwood Board can help to advocate this and bring it about. Thanks. Thank you very much. Would anyone else like to speak at this time? Okay. Seeing none then. Um, we'll move on. There's another chance at the end. First, next item then is our approval of February 2022 and July 2022 minutes from our meetings. Board members, does anyone have any comments or revisions to either of those minutes? I will move the microphone closer to me. Is that better at least? Thank you. It's, it's hard to tell up here. So apologize for that. Um, any board members with comments on the February and July 2022 minutes? Good evening, Mr. Robeson. Seeing none, would anybody like to make a motion, um, maybe separately, starting with February? Um, Vice Chair Jordan. I move that we pass the February minutes as they are written. Is there a second? Mr. Dean, thank you. Hold on. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 
on to July 2022 minutes. I didn't hear any comments. If no one has any, I would want to make a motion. And we accept the July minutes as they're written. Thank you, Vice Chair Jordan. And do I have a second? I'll second that as well. Thank you. Moved and seconded. Further discussion? All those in favor, aye. say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Levi, updates from the airport manager. Here we go. I hope this thing's still on here. All right. Um, got a few things to go over uh, with you guys tonight for update-wise. As I guess I'll start off with airport updates, rates, and charges. I was hoping to actually have this on as a uh, an action item for uh, this evening's meeting, but unfortunately we weren't able to get it through legal quick enough to get that on to. Uh... Oh, can you hear me now? All right, there we go. Let me get a little closer to it. We weren't able to get the racing charges onto uh, this meeting because we're not quite through legal yet. Um, there probably won't be a great deal of changes from those from the ones you guys previously approved last summer. Um, a rather in-depth review of that is essentially we're moving forward most likely with the way that they are. Uh, so expect to see a document very similar to what you had before. Uh, other airport updates. Uh, Southwest Sewer Project is continuing to move forward. The contract has been signed by the um, uh, c c the contractor, to my understanding. Um, the window now for construction is going to be late October to December. And they're going to start actually working on that. Um, around the airport, we're doing a great deal of dirt work, getting a lot of drainage issues that have been um, kind of stacking up over the years. Fix around the port, just a little quick information item there. Striping, um, we will be starting, hopefully, airport striping pretty soon, the stage one of that project. Right now, we're just waiting to hear back from the strikers on their schedule so we can get them out on the airport to actually start that work as well. Uh, mowing, um, we do, did finally get the airport mowed. We had a little bit of a, a headache involving that this summer. Our mower quit um, June. This actually turns out to be when the, uh, the contra his contract was up. Um, he did, chose not to extend the contract. Um, so we did get to mower. L&M Enterprises came out and did that for us last week. The airport's looking really nice now, which is good because another information item I have is the FAA will be doing inspections next week. They haven't been out the airport in two or three years, so this will be the first time they've been there in a while. Uh, so it's good to have making sure all our uh, runway safety areas are up to spec. Uh, let's see. Updates, updates. Other updates. Um, just actually between when the agenda for this meeting went out and uh, now uh, the FAA announced that they're going to be having their uh, CIP planning kickoff um, starting honestly this month into October. So we'll start thinking about what we want to do as far as CIP projects in the near future. I've reached out to our engineers so we can get them to come and do some meetings. We'll probably go ahead and do some meetings with field engineers, I and the FAA to kind of get a general idea of what's going on. And of course, we can bring stuff back to the board and stuff like that for that. But that is coming up soon. All right. That's what I have for updates. Information items, I suppose. Oh. Are we ready to move on to that? Let me pause and see if there's any questions from the board first. Up on your update. So. OK. I think that's Mr. Dean first. Go ahead, sir. So we've got a temporary bond company, L&M. So our intent is moving forward. Instead of having that contract expire mid-mowing season, we're going to move that and have it expire in the middle of the winter. So if someone did decide not to renew the contract, that it would be a little simpler matter of getting someone going again. Um, we had difficulties initially finding a mower because we got some rather outrageous quotes, and then we had an issue with a uh, we had a decent quote, but it was a city employee, so we couldn't con award a contract to a city employee. So it was a little bit, oh, yes, indeed. Uh, so we had to avoid that. But um, yes, in, in the future, we'll hopefully not have this issue. Yep. Just a quick point. Um, if you can please use your mics, because this is being recorded uh, with on YouTube. So we need everybody to use their mics if they can. Thank you. Any other questions for anybody? All right, Levi, how about we move on to information items, lease term updates then. Right, information item, lease term update, number one. So we're 
uh, kind of in the middle, and this is still, again, another item that's kind of with the lawyers, uh, updating lease terms. Um, there's going to be some, most likely some minor uh, changes made, which will, again, come back to this board as things are kind of uh, written out and, and uh, kind of given the rubber stamp from make sure everything's kosher as far as legal goes. One of the things that kind of sparked all that was the FAA uh, was taking a little bit of notice with, uh, we had 30 years leases with 30-year option to renew, which the came back said, look, we consider that to be a six-year lease and a violation of brand assurances. So we're kind of taking that out of it and moving it into an acceptable form for the, for the FAA. Um, Is there closer to the mic? Wait a second. Can I turn the mic up? Yeah. I'm pretty loud in my own. I can hear it like echoing in my ears. Yeah. Uh, I wonder, these speakers must not be on or something. Uh, How about this? Can you guys hear me better like this? Here, I'm just going to like hold it on my mouth and we'll just do this. Alright, I, I feel like a, a news reporter from the 1970s here with this little stick microphone on now. Alright, um, but lease term updates to come into kind of guidance with the FAA and what they're looking for. Um, and that's what I have on that. Do you think that that's something we're going to see next month? Or that, that? <laughs> that's my greatest hope. Um, experiences taught me that it takes the amount of time it takes to kind of get through legal, but uh, things, the, uh, I was reassured uh, earlier today that it's, that should be ready for us. And are there other changes besides the term that are you know, significant changes? Right now that's the only significant change that's really kind of been brought out. There's other some, some potential changes coming with the first drive refusal. Uh, but apart from that, nothing else. And these only apply to new leases? Yes, this is just new leases that won't affect any of the existing leases. Other questions from the board? Vice Chair Jordan? So, on renewal, mm -hmm. the existing lease uh, that was, say, 20 years, can they, will they do you think they're still going to be able to renew for 30? Because that was a, something we voted on, so that was a, that's a city. So as, as long as whatever, so it, they wouldn't be able to renew for 30, you would have another 30 option to renew. They would not be able to do that. Um, for further, um, before I make further comment on that, I want to talk with the lawyers or certainly with the FAA and make sure that there's a kosher with them. So it's a 50-year uh, total. So if you had a 20, you could potentially get a 30 to, to have a 50-year. Potentially. That would be the maximum that the FAA would allow. And then what happens after that? Uh, at that point, you have to negotiate a new lease. A new lease. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, at least I want to make sure I'm understanding that right. There, there's nothing that says you can't have kind of one person with a, with a lease, as no. long as it's separate leases, separate documents. Exactly. Okay. It's so, what it all comes in from is the grant assurances, essentially, for the use of the airport land. So, the FAA says that anything over 50 years is considered a disposal of land, and ergo, since you are disposing of the land, since it's not in your control, it is a violation of grant assurances. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Move on then. All right. Item number two: presentations to include for airport advisory board discussion. And this is something that Harrison and I were talking generally about before, and just kind of throw open discussion as far as what topics that we may want to talk about in the future. And there were some suggestions that Harrison and I think might be able to bring up on his phone. Um, but yes, we just kind of wanted to start a, a general kind of dialogue about that. Yeah, so maybe I'll
I'll kick that off with the uh, suggestions that were sent in and then open it up the floor from there. Um, I'm going to summarize. I apologize if I missed some of these. But the suggestions that were sent, we had uh, discussions on airport finance, public funding sources. I hope you're hearing me better. I'm hearing feedback from myself, but I hope that's okay still. Um, public funding sources, use agreements and use relationships, public-private partnerships, private funding, uh, financial structures and flows, balance sheets, income statements, etc. FAA targets for funding, particularly around electrification, urban air mobility, multimodal integration. Transportation electrification, uh, with an emphasis on EAVs and infrastructure. FAA next gen. Changes in air mobility. Next generation airport infrastructure. Multimodal transportation systems. Unmanned air vehicles. Near-term growth opportunities for Vance brand and uh, benchmarking into other airports. It's a lot. Really good topics. Board members, anything that um, stuck out for me there, and absolutely you can add to this. This, was, this is a set of suggestions. Um, Mr. Dean, you're up first. That's certainly a, a topic that we can talk about. Um, can you just repeat that since I know his mic oh, wasn't working? Gotcha. Uh, the, the discussion topic came up for talking about a new air show and setting some dates for that. Okay, so that will definitely be on the list. Talos, if you want to do it again, I will swap to you. Sorry about that. Hello? Testing? Okay. Um, I love the idea of more infrastructure. I would like to single out the idea of energy storage at the airport. I think that that's a good location for a potential energy storage, especially if we're going to be bringing in high volume capacity of energy transmission. Uh, I think it makes a lot of sense. Thank you. Anyone else have topics you'd like to see added and or what you want to prioritize? <laughs> There was a lot there. That's, you know, two years of meetings I think we've got set up. So where do we want to start? <laughs> Don't everyone speak up at once. <laughs> You're try I'm going to try to turn you on, Malcolm. I don't think it's working, though. I think, yeah, we do have that on the list then, right? So, yeah, I, I think that needs to be, yeah, up quickly. Okay? okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Yep. All right. Melinda. I just recommend that we choose uh, some short-term goals and some long-term that in kind of, I think our long-term can be lumped together with the, um, the future of aviation and our short-term uh, can be some of the more pressing daily issues. Kind of isolate those and, and um, use time.
time is our priority, I think. Palin? I think that uh, infrastructure obviously, should, well, in my opinion, should go first. Uh, we can make decisions on what to add on after the infrastructure is already in there, especially the high capacity energy transmission lines. Mr. Robeson. Thank you. Uh, I might have missed it in there, or this might be part of infrastructure, I don't know, but the runway extension, was that on the list? If not, I would put it on there. It was not specifically on the list, no. Mr. Bliss, sorry. Are we uh, collecting the FBO, a new FBO, a restaurant, more hangers? So we get all that stuff. I don't see why we're going to go go ahead and jump ahead into the next yeah. next generation. So I think the, the intent of this list is certainly not to neglect a runway extension or an FBO improvement, Southside restrooms, anything. It is how are we, how can we as a board be prepared for what's coming next and be able to mm -hmm. kind of be educated to advise council. Um, since that is our responsibility to make sure we're, we're kind of keeping up with things. It is in no way, shape, or form trying to set, you know, a particular agenda or prioritization for projects, but more keeping us educated and informed. For better or for worse. <laughs> that was the idea. The comments I had passed to Levi, I think broadly, was to try to tie topics, um, you know, in that vein of making sure we're well informed the month of or the month before we thought there was going to be a topic that was going to go to council that we would need to recommend a course of action to council so that we have a chance to, you know, hear that, discuss it, receive feedback on it in advance of a specific proposal coming out. Mm -hmm. And I know that's, you know, at this point not entirely sure which order those things are going to come to us in. Yeah. So that I think that's that was the downside of my suggestion, but at least trying to you know put it in that perspective of you know how does it tie back to our responsibility to educate council? Yeah, again, it's, it's so we can do that. Just getting a head start on it. Absolutely, uh, Mr. Jordan. With that in consideration, I would recommend that we um, consider first the FBO and the infrastructure what the future of that looks like, and then next, the electrification, because we'd have to have new facilities to accommodate the electrification. We've got um, LPC and the people that are smart enough to know what we're going to need and to plan for it as we do that, but the, um, we've still got some infrastructure needs at the airport if we're going to handle that kind of traffic, and then uh, move toward electrification, because that's going to happen quickly, and we want to be ahead of the curve on that, which includes next-gen multimodal and in the process of that, I think we end up uh, finance, use agreements, leases, you know, these um, more uh, housekeeping items are going to get resolved mm -hmm. as we move forward. But the situation with the FBO is um, sad, <laughs> and so I feel like that's something that needs to be addressed sooner than later, just where do we stand, what are their obligations, um, are they meeting them, you know, it's just gone on way too long uh, with the FBO and the depleted um, student fleet and the conditions. And um, if we can put those all together where we can plan for infrastructure and uh, be forward-looking enough to include the um, uh, power, uh, charging stations and some of the electrical, electrical needs that we would need to be an airport of the future. I think the, the discussion about the FBO can it kind of leads into some of those topics like you know investing in infrastructure in the airport and it can kind of come into that category also and planning and stuff like that. Uh, Mr. Robeson. Thank you. Um, just if we're going to be talking about planning for the future, I think one thing that would help me and maybe everybody, do we have any big maps of the airport that we could either bring or print a, a new and put up here so we can all be looking at the same area? Yeah, we certainly could, and we can also do them on the monitors, I'm sure, also, yeah. if we wanted to. I think that would be a good idea for every meeting, to just have it up somewhere, so if we're talking about some planning, that we would be looking at the same area. Yeah, we certainly can, when we come to planning, then making this, I mean, that's a very logical thing, yes. 
uh, Councilmember Martin. Thank you. Um, I don't technically have the privilege of addressing this board except at the end, so with the permission of the members, uh, anybody object to me speaking at this point? Um, I just wanted to say, uh, because it pertains to two of the really high priority topics here, that um, there is a count, uh, a resolution uh, that has been prepared for um, uh, that Longmont commits to a sustainable airport, but the authors of the resolution are not, uh, they're pilots, but they're not Longmont residents. And uh, it would be good if a Longmont resident introduced that resolution as a mayoral proclamation. Um, so anyone who wants to talk to me about that that is interested in doing that, they may. The um, What I have learned from my contacts in the battery industry and such um, is, is that um, there's a lot of grant money to be had uh, around electrification. And since several people have mentioned that, I would just wanted to get that piece of information out there, that it could get a lot of uh, potentially um, money coming in other than via the usual channels. And the other thing is that the sustainability resolution would bear a lot on um, getting a better FBO because it puts requirements um, versus uh, uh, around additional you know, clean, clean fuels as well as um, the electric infrastructure. So uh, again, the, these are not recommendations by me. These are just pieces of information that I had that I thought that you might want to have. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Jordan, hold on. Go ahead. Thank you, Council Member Marsha. Um, where can we learn more about the resolution? Like who's making it? What's the time frame? Um, what, if somebody volunteers, what are they getting themselves into? There is a resolution already drafted that is available, um, so there are several ways to approach it. I have a copy, and um, uh, again, you know, the authors want it to be introduced, but they'd rather it be introduced by a Longmont resident. Um, it could also be um, a recommendation of this board, so I would be willing to provide it to anyone who, for example, wanted to put it on next month's agenda or um, to any, give it to anyone who wants to just submit it through the city website. It, I just was saying it exists and it's time to run with it probably, but I shouldn't and neither should somebody from outside the city. Thank you all for that. Um, Leela, do you think we have, I think, some guidance on at least yeah. how to I've, proceed for the next couple of months? I've got a good list here, and we can kind of go over that and get us some good topics for future okay. advisory board meetings. I would also just note um, this is not a closed list. This is not just us pushing out ideas. That initial list came from um, members of the community. would encourage anyone to keep sending suggestions. And also, if you have a particular interest in this, board members and public alike, um, and want to be the expert speaking on one of these topics, please let us know. Um, the goal is so that we're all learning. Um, that only happens if we have experts or people who have taken an interest in something willing to talk about it. Otherwise, it's a little bit of blind leading the blind here. Any further discussion? Okay. We'll move on then to our action items. Um, for the avoidance of any conflict of interest, since I do work for an engineering firm, I'm going to ask Vice Chair Jordan to uh, introduce our next uh, agenda item and manage that discussion. Go ahead. Turn on. So we'd like to address agenda item seven, 
which is an action item. Uh, number one is to select a board member for the RFP process, uh, to select an engineer, and number two being to select a board member for the RFP, specifically for the South Side development. Do we have any volunteers? And um, would Airport Manager Brown, would you like to speak to that, what the expectation would be? Yes, absolutely. Um, so our contract with our on-call engineers is coming up. Um, it's been five years that we've had these engineers. FAA uh, guidance says that at that point we need to put it out with the request for proposal again. We don't really have an option. Can't extend the contract. So we're trying to get a little bit of a heads up on it. Uh, that contract isn't actually up until December. Um, the issue we're having at the moment is that the FAA is less than willing to start new projects unless they know exactly who the engineers are going to be. So we're trying to get a little bit of a heads up on it and get that out as soon as we can. We're currently working on a request for proposal. Uh, once we get that all kind of finalized and looks good, we're going to put that out. As part of the selection process, we ask that uh, someone from the airport board can essentially consult with us and just give us their input on that all. Thank you. Do you need to, would you like to consider two board members or just a single person? I think if I recall correctly, and I'll, I'll double check it, I think that our, our policy actually says one board member. Okay. I think the way it actually lines out how we do it, but um, I will double check that. Do I need to make a motion to have Callis? Okay. I move that uh, Talis uh, be our representative for the lease, uh, for the um, RFP for the engineering firm. Second by Russ. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. Talis it is. Number two then is the RFP for the south side development. Do I have a volunteer? I'm not volunteering yet. I want to know what your specific um, idea is on the south side development. So, development. so currently there is no request for proposal out for south side development. We've still got some other housekeeping that we got to do. got to raise charges set, got our leases all lined out, stuff like that. This is kind of a, a preemptive step. We're just kind of reaching out and maybe getting something set up a little bit earlier. So if we do get everything nice and lined out, request we have to request proposal out there, we actually have someone already lined up to start moving on that. Okay. All right, then I nominate uh, board member uh, Dean for the RFP for the Southside Development uh, process. All in favor? I need a second, sorry. Second by Talis, and all in favor? All opposed? It goes then. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Vice Chair Jordan, for, for managing that. Um, Levi, no other action items on the agenda? That's all we have for this month. Hopefully, we'll have some decisions to make next month, though. Thank you, then. Um, we're on to our final public invited to be heard. Would anyone else like to speak this evening? Please, sir, come on down. I'll repeat the instructions from before. Please start with your name and address. Um, I will start a five-minute timer, address your comments to the board, and please be respectful to all. The last part of that was what? Uh, please be respectful to everyone. Respectful to everyone. Well, that's going to be tough. <laughs> we got Dan Dunn here, so I've, I've already told him I'm going to beat on him. So, uh, My name is Dave Kopp, and I am um, an officer with the uh, Longmont Owners and Pilots Association, 229 Airport Road, Unit 33. And uh, I want to first take exception to, to Levi's point in last meeting that uh, uh, 30 years plus 30 year renewal is a grant assurance violation. I, we have a lot of feedback both from the AOPA and the FAA and that is not true. And the uh, land disposal, applies after reading their 30 pages on that stuff, it is really has more to do with the cell tower and the 
and the uh, seismic guys in the southwest corner that they need to be relocated if, in fact, the airport needs that land. Um, there are many examples of other airports out there that have 30 plus 30, and we fought for the last 10 years to get that on the, uh, the ballot. The residents have voted for it. It's a real advantage, not just the airport, but a lot of low-income housing on land that the city owns. We're really reluctant to give that up. So um, our leases are written as 30 years with a renewal at the end of the 30 years. It really doesn't commit to another 30, so it's really a 30-year lease. Obviously, that's our expectation, but uh, uh, it's not a commitment. It's whatever the city wants. They control the leases, but they have to be fair and equitable. They currently have eight leases out there with 30 and 30, which represent over 75 of the 300 hangars we have out there. So to be fair and equitable to everybody, they need to keep that going. Um, the other thing is that, uh, well, that, that is the heart of it, but uh, uh, we have a significant investment in the airport out there, so we've got an awful lot of people very worried about the rumors that are flying around out there. And the bottom line is we've sent six questions to Levi, that very basic questions that we need answers for. Levi drug his feet on that. We've been fighting for over a week, two weeks now total, to try to get a meeting with him. Can't do it. So he's, asked, he's told us to escalate that to his bosses. I don't know, Phil, are you his boss? Yeah, okay. Well, Phil, uh, did you get that escalation? Yep. Okay. And we got an answer coming? Uh, today? We haven't gotten it yet. I mean, there was a letter mailed to the, the uh, address that the letter was sent to me. Uh, yesterday or today? Last week. Last week. Last week. Wow. <laughs> Snail mail. All right. Well, we appreciate it, um, and we'll help uh, um, put that to bed by sending those out to the rest of the uh, airport users. Uh, to, to help calm them down, hopefully, and not raise up something that we have to take further. So I appreciate your time. Did anybody have trouble hearing me? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hello, I'm Mark Arnold, 8243 Cattail Drive. Uh, I've been a pilot and aircraft owner at Longmont for probably 20 years now. And uh, thanks to all of you for your interest in helping to keep things moving forward. Um, without understanding the context or the background of that list that you quickly ran through, um, I'm thinking that maybe there are a couple of items that could also go on that list. One is um, there is work uh, at various airports, both domestically and internationally, with photovoltaic utility scale um, solar power generation on the infield of airports. And I don't know if that was on your list, but um, the property represents a very significant asset for the city. And unlike a lot of these other infrastructure projects that are net to maybe hopeful return in the future, you can actually perhaps finance it with power, um, uh, power generation agreements in advance so that you can bring in other capital in order to develop uh, the infield for power generation. So if that's not on the list, I'd like to suggest adding that. The other is there's a lot of news now about uh, unleaded aviation fuel uh, coming soon. And in order to implement that, it may require some additional fuel farm capability. And I'm not sure if that also made it on your list. Just two small items. But thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else right now? Going once? OK. We'll move on then to uh, board, council, and staff comments, starting with board members. Who wants to kick us off? Vice Chair Jordan. So uh, bring up the air show dates again, just because we're within a year right now if we go with September, and we need a year for uh, DOD. Um, and then we would need to form a, at least a, 
uh, leadership group, and then I would reach out to the uh, members who helped in the past and had significant roles and know what to do and to get the ball rolling. So we just need to, to uh, vet the dates um, and just see if we can just get a date and just start there, and then we can move around if we need to, or get a, there's no way we can do it, or we can only do it in June, or just some definitive yes or no, and then um, so that we can start to uh, save the date to the volunteer organizations and things like that. So that's the first thing. Go ahead. Yeah, let's uh, go ahead and just put that on uh, maybe our number one item for next month. Okay. Um, in the meantime, if you can help me track down some of the lists and stuff mm -hmm. like that that we use in the past on reaching out to people. I'm happy to do that task, actually, to reach its Civil Air Patrol and all the, um, the cadet groups with the sheriff, the police, the um, CAP, a lot of groups that do the volunteer work. So it's really up to us to pick a date and then reach out to them to, to see about saving the date, or we can, we usually just set the date and then go after them. Um, every, you know, people are always going to have conflicts, but then the, um, the DOD application, uh, Dan Berry had done that for us in the past. I had to ask him if, and Malcolm will see him on Monday, ask him if he'd be willing to do that for us again, uh, start that process. So a few things just to get the ball rolling and then start those really high-level meetings of uh, the tasks, and we do keep all of that in a Dropbox and have all of our um, data and lists from years past. So that's number one. Number two is because there are so many people here, this is awesome, and uh, we have board positions that are going to be open at the end of the year, so we do have an empty chair, and then my position is up and, and I'm turned out, and there's a couple other positions that are up. I think I'm the only one that's going to run out of term, um, but we'll have at least two positions open. And this is the one thing you can do where you can speak, um, participate, uh, have input, um, steer, you know, give some direction, and you don't have to be elected, and you don't have to apply for a job and go through that. And so you just apply and go through a couple of interviews, and um, we definitely like to have a full slate so that we don't, we fail to have a quorum at uh, one of our meetings this year. And I know a lot of you guys have served in the past, and so if you want to consider coming back, um, we've got a lot of momentum. And as you can tell from the agenda items in our list, it's taken us a long time to get past the issues that were facing the board when I joined, and now we're facing the future, and a lot has changed. And so I really encourage you, if, um, if you've done it before, it's pretty easy, you know how it goes, and if you haven't, uh, to think about it, you do have to be a resident of the city of Longmont is the uh, requirement. And then the applications are going to be open soon. I think maybe even the application season has started as of today. Okay. So just encourage you, and I really appreciate you participating and coming, and then you hear it firsthand, you know, at least, and have an opportunity to interact and ask questions. And this board uh, made the decision to extend the public portion to five minutes to let us have um, more time to hear what's on your mind and get it out clearly and not be have, to have a truncated message. And uh, this really is your opportunity to speak and be heard and have it on the record. It's, it's on the public record. So um, it's really a good opportunity. So think about the board uh, either continuing to attend and or applying for some of the positions that will be open. Um, that will begin in January of next year. Thank you, Mr. Jordan. That was uh, on my list to bring up as well, so I appreciate you beating me to it. Uh, Mr. Robeson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just to give you guys an update on the air show from what I've been up to, I've uh, been to Colby, Kansas and Valentine, Nebraska to see one Airbus named Dale Burkett, and he'll be, um, if I do a good job, giving me my recommendation to become the Airbus. I have to submit a, basically a practice air show to him, which I'll just mock up the one for next year. Um, the easiest way to go about this besides the DOD is I already know all the guys that perform out there and they, you know, if they all come as a package, we're done. I mean, that's an easy way to do it. So I just got a text from Bob Freeman who lives here and flies the extra in the air shows. has an amazing show. He was at uh, Warriors Over the Wasatch and it's uh, definitely one that we want. So he says he's going to get back to me in a few days uh, about which weekend in September would be best for him and I would recommend that whatever he says, that we do that and, and choose that at next month's meeting and go forward from there. Um, the other one is Tom Larkin is from Denver. He flies a mini jet, and he'll 
the reason I'm suggesting these guys is because generally the city is going to pay for transportation for the performers to come to Longmont. So if we get a guy from Longmont, we get a guy from Denver, we're saving money already. And these guys have great shows that I've seen twice or three times now. Um, well, I think those are the main parts. But I'd be happy to answer any other questions about their bossing part. First of all, congratulations. I missed you at Colby. You were there Friday and I was there Saturday and it was a great show. It was, yeah. It was really well run and I really took notes about how they handled things differently than we've done and I thought they did a really good job and that was their first show, I think, so they were, it was, they yeah. did a really good job. Um, the DOD would be for the flyover, yeah. so that would be for the purpose of the, of the flyover, which is the Grand Slam and, uh, Yeah, so, that would be great. Yeah. And, and it's always a request, and we mm -hmm. apply, and then we hold our breath, and then we find out, what, 12 hours before, right, yeah. maybe, maybe 24 hours before if we're going to get it. But worth doing, because when we've had it in the past, it was a, that was a memorable event, yeah. for sure, 100 feet off the ground. The only, that's the only thing that takes a year, though. Everything yeah. else, four or five months, is plenty of time, yeah. um, except that I would recommend that Airport Manager Brown start to familiarize yourself with who would be coming out from EMS, police, and fire because they're going to be integral to the operation. So just you know, make sure you know the contacts in the city and, and that kind of thing. But again, that's uh, there's no hurry on that. Yeah, we've had um, people that served in the leadership capacity. Um, Chad Ranicky, firefighter. Um, so we've had we've got people on the airport that are connected for most of the things that we need. So it's a, that part, that high level is pretty. Um, that some people will volunteer for those leadership positions, then we're pretty well set. And then it's just uh, 125 volunteers um, and getting them to save that date. And then Bob Freeman, we didn't get him a couple of years ago because he had an uh, international show. Yeah, we want him for sure. Yeah, so that, I agree that that's, that's a good, um, that's better than us throwing a dart at a date. That'll be, that could be the deciding factor. That'd be fantastic because it was really uh, unfortunate to not have him at our show at our field. So that would be a priority. Fantastic. Thank you. Any other board members or comments? I will um, couple them, uh, especially out of the public comments. I really appreciate the, the education topics on photovoltaic sales, cells on the infield and what's possible for that. I'm really curious about that, particularly in you know, recognizing there's glare restrictions with them on an airfield, so I'm really curious to learn about that, uh, as well as potential changes for unleaded abgas. I know that's been a topic that's come up before. Um, Levi, Phil, I have no clue how we would even go about talking about um, kind of the park improvement idea that was raised at the beginning of the meeting, but I'd be really curious to follow up with you guys um, outside of a board meeting, kind of discuss that and see you know, see, see what possibility it is, because it is, that is a really unique asset for the airport, and I agree that having, you know, that community engagement there is, is important as we're looking to continue to grow and do more things at the airport. Um, and look forward to the 30 plus 30 discussion next month and really diving into that and learning a lot about that. Council Member Martin, um, before I turn on the mic, I would appreciate seeing the resolution. Um, and at least uh, having a chance to have a discussion with you about that. And um, I'll open to you for any questions, any comments. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Um, let's see. First of all, I'm really happy to see so many people here. Um, it's been a long time since I had to, had to miss the July meeting and was only uh, dialed in. Um, but it's great to see so much interest. Um, I love the list of, of topics that um, you all have assembled. Um, second, I noticed that on this, um, on this agenda, there is no way uh, for a board member to suggest an agenda item for the next board meeting, which is something that is um, uh, a feature that council meetings have. And it seems like uh, several times in this meeting, that was what we wanted to do, and there was no way to do it. So um, I would like to make the suggestion that that becomes a permanent addition 
to um, just to, to, to the standard agenda. I don't know whether you guys have to vote on that next month or what, but I'm throwing it out there as a suggestion. Um, Longmont is under some uh, special constraints uh, because of our contract with the Platte River Power Authority, um, and that uh, may limit what we can do in terms of PV uh, on the grounds of the airport. Uh, however, um, a hangar is, is a, um, a building that is entitled by state law and the, our contract with PRPA to um, uh, have PV on its roof. Um, and whether it's a tea, tea hangers run by the airport or whether it is uh, a privately owned hangar, same deal. Those things are, are uh, both options. So um, I would be willing to, you know, meet with a one or two person uh, delegation to discuss that. Um, a one or two person in terms of the board member, people who aren't on the board, could be addition, an addition to that. I have repeatedly mentioned uh, that we may need to specifically talk about hangers in our um, updated electrification codes, and I'm not sure that there's any traction on that, so maybe somebody needs to come speak to the council about that. Um, the electrification committee is going to give its report, I believe, on October 10th to council, if that's a Tuesday, um, or it is, yeah, I, think, I thought it was. Um, but uh, uh, a number of the hangers that are out there now are, are not uh, PV ready, but the new hangers could be PV ready. Um, so, so that is an option, and I also understand uh, that uh, the FAA has decided that glare is not going to be a problem, and and so they are also, um, you know, not standing in the way of putting solar panels on in the airport. So, uh, oh, and all of those things. If we, we need a new FBO, the um, unleaded fuel there are uh, there's. Um, uh, Net zero jet fuel is is another fuel that that can be provided, and I hope we're coming close to the idea of of what the what the battery scheme is going to be for um, AVs, and uh, so all of those things would need to go into the RFP uh, if we put the idea of the uh, FBO out to bid. And I would love to see that happen. Um, I don't think that I think that I think that caught everything, but those are great suggestions uh, from the public. So I'm very happy to see them. See that. Thank you, Councilmember Martin. Um, staff comments. Levi, Phil. No comments at this time. Okay. Um, one more last chance. Anything else, Bruce? Vice Chair Jordan. Just rounding out on what Marcia said, I think um, of the people here, we've all flown into other airports and seen these spectacular buildings and these fantastic runways, and they have a population of like 500 people. And <laughs> so we just, that's our goal, is just to get our airport looking as good as, as some of the others. And with the park idea as well, that beautification along Airport Road, um, would really give us a, um, an enhanced curbside appeal, arrival, departure appeal as people are coming in and out of the airport. That's been a, uh, something we've talked about since I joined the board is getting the airport looking like it's in just the last century would be great. Um, and so, <laughs> and I assume with the FBO it would be a green, you know, you'd have green construction and energy efficient and there'd be a lot of things at play there. So. Um, it's good to, to have your uh, passion behind that as well. 
and I think that I don't think there's anybody in the room who's flown into some of these more gorgeous airports that hasn't said, how come we haven't gotten that done? And the grants and the money that's out there, and, and I think we've got the momentum again to start moving, getting this, this rock that has been sitting for quite a while, get it rolling again. So that's encouraging. Gordon Robinson. Thanks. I uh, know we're going to talk about it more uh, probably at the next meeting, but just two quick questions about the FPO contract. Is there an end date for that contract, and is it exclusive? Uh, there is an end date for it with all leases that go on the airport. The, the FBO lease is kind of a special one because it requires more of the, yeah. uh, the individuals on it. Uh, the FBO is a, a recent in, in discussion uh, currently uh, with, the, with the city. And so, you know, I would, I would talk about too much uh, because I'm not quite sure which way things are going, but it's, it's definitely a topic that's come up. Um, and then what was your second part of your question? Well, you can't say the end date here. Is that what you're telling me? I, I have to check the exact the, the lease itself for the exact end date. I want to say off the top of my head the, the technical. You got to know. No, what we can do is we'll we'll look that up. We'll send a we'll send an email out yeah. with that information so you have it. Yeah. And if is we it, don't have it at the right now, so right. my apologies. Is it exclusive? Can we build another FBO? So there, that's actually another part of grant assurances is we're not allowed to have exclusive, exclusive oh, agreements. Okay. So it's not exclusive. Yeah. So it's not exclusive. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Thank you. Levi, anyone else? Well, thank you very much for the discussions tonight. I uh, appreciate so many people being here and providing comments. Um, look forward to a lot of these discussions as they come up. Um, with that, though, we'll adjourn for tonight. So. Thank you all very much. See you next month.